Let's build a floating island of Zinch. Like all great terrain projects, this one's going to start out with high density foam. This stuff is normally used for insulation of a home, but we're gonna be using it to build the island and the base of the island. Let's start by drawing a seven inch square on the piece of foam. Once the square is complete, I have to fit in an equilateral triangle somewhere inside of the seven inch square. I'm drawing my triangle one inch from the border and making the triangle side six inches long. Just as a refresher, an equilateral triangle means that the internal angles are 60 degrees. The size of the actual triangle inside doesn't really matter. Uh, you just have to fit it within the seven inch square. If you wanna follow along uh, with my exact measurements and then venture out later, you can. Once the triangle is complete, you wanna mark out the center of each side. It should be three inches from the vertex if you're following my exact measurements. Now that that's complete, you wanna perform the exact same process again on a second piece of foam. Same sizes, same everything. The only difference is that you don't have to mark out the halfway points of your sides of the triangle. Now let's cut out the squares. Now that we have the two pieces cut, we have to shape them into our floating disc islands. I'm going to use a hot wire foam cutter, but you can use whatever is laying around and whatever can give you a nice clean cut. The important thing to remember is not to cut inside of the triangle. Always stay outside of the perimeter of the triangle. Once the first shape is cut, what you want to do is you want to take that and put it right on top of the second piece and then trace an outline. What you're going to try to do is you're going to cut through that outline so that you have two somewhat similar sized pieces. Now that you have these two pieces, what you want is to drill a hole where you made the marks on the first piece and also on the vertices of the other triangle that didn't have the mark in the center of the sides. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cut four six inch long chains. These are going to be fed through the holes that you just drilled and they are going to be holding up the entire floating island. I'm using chain but you could use pretty much anything you want if you just want simple rope or string that works as well. Once the chain is cut, you want to feed the chain through the holes, like I said, and then just leave them there. You want to do this only to one island piece, not both of them. It doesn't matter which one. Once those are fed through, you want to quickly secure them in place. I'm using hot glue. I suggest you also do hot glue just because it dries quicker. <laughs> While the hot glue is drying, I'm going to start cutting out the leg pieces that are going to be holding up the floating island. To do this, we have to make a 60 degree cut on a one inch thick cube, like so. We have to make two of these and actually if you just flip the cut that you just made upside down and then trace out the length of the piece, you could just simply cut it. The 60 degree uh, cut is already there. These should be four and a half inch long. Now we're going to glue these legs onto the islands, but before we do that, we want to drill a hole half an inch from the flat end of the cube on both pieces. Okay. 
and then feed the final chain, the fourth chain that you cut, through one of the holes and then hot glue the chain piece to that one piece. Only one piece. Don't hot glue the other piece. The other piece you just want to feed it through and just have it sit there for now. The next thing you want to do is you want to hot glue the angled end of the leg to the vertex of the triangle, just like this. Once the legs are dried and secured onto each island, we want to flip the island so that the two legs run at an angle from each other, but never touch. And then you want to feed the chains that should be dangling down to the corresponding vertices, or if you decided to put the chain or hot glue the chain to the vertex, then to the um, corresponding uh, halfway point of the sides. Secure these with hot glue as well. <laughs> Hay que saber que la verdad es lo único que nos va a salvar y que nos dará mejores personas. Protesten, quéjense, no se dejen, prepárense, hagan de su vida lo que ustedes desean. This next part is the tricky part. Once the glue has dried from all of the connected chains, you need to pull on the loose chain that is going through the hole of the leg and then create tension in order to hold the thing up. This is gonna be hard at first, but once you get the hang of it, all it is is you need to find a balance. And then once the balance is there and the top of the island is basically floating the way it's supposed to and it's leveled, you wanna secure the loose chain with hot glue. You can cut any extra chain from the center piece and then just step back and see how the island balances. If you need to tweak it a little bit, you can. All you have to do is pull on one of the side chains or, or ropes and then find a place where you could level the top of the island. Don't stress out too much about the top level of the island. We're gonna be adding paint and a bunch of other stuff to it so the balance of that top island is going to shift. Uh, we'll correct that towards the end. Now that you have your terrain piece looking like this, what we want to do is we want to go back to the wire foam cutter and shape the bottom of the island so that it's more accessible for minis. Uh, cut pieces that um, make it more slanted and allow you to actually place miniatures underneath the island. Also, cut pieces from the center of the legs to make it look a little bit more organic, but don't go too crazy because that's kind of where the structure is. So if you weaken the legs, the entire thing is just gonna collapse. We're also gonna shape the island with the foam cutter by slicing away from the bottom to the top of the piece. Be careful not to cut any of the chain or the hot glue that is securing the chain to the piece. This is what the terrain piece should look like so far. In order to make the whole piece look more island-like, we're going to use Sculpt the Mold. This material is like paper mache mixed with a little bit of plaster. It's going to erase a lot of the straight lines that we cut with the foam cutter, and it's gonna give the piece a slightly more realistic look, um, which is really what we're searching for. It's a matter of you molding it to fit uh, an aesthetic that you like. If you actually like this, just leave it like this and get to the painting. But if you want to add some um, more organic shapes to it, then the sculpt mode is awesome. Once everything is dry, we're going to begin priming the whole thing in the Black Magic Craft fashion by using Mod Podge and black paint. When the primer finally dries, it's time to paint this terrain piece. I'm going to do a heavy dry brush of dark gray. The reason I'm going with grays is because I kind of want to match this to other terrain pieces that I have. If you are going for a zinch vibe, then maybe you should use like pinks or blues or uh, some something that has to do with like vibrant colors uh, of a demon world. Uh, I want it to look just simple gray uh, and rocky, so I'm going with a dark gray for now. After the heavy dry brush of the dark gray has dried, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my gray and then do a lighter dry brush of this mixture of white and gray.
Once that is dry, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take simple white and uh, do a very light dry brush on the whole piece. Now it's time to work on flocking the top of the island. Just like my previous terrain pieces, I have three different colors of green flock. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to cover the entire top of the island with some PVA glue. Well, I shouldn't say the entire top. What I'm doing is I am leaving the places that are raised to make those seem as if they, were, they are the rock coming from the bottom of the island. Uh, and I am only going to be adding glue with a brush around the areas that should be flat and where grass would grow. So I'm gonna do a mixture of three different colors of uh, flock and then just sprinkle it on there. Once the flocking is done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some PVA glue and I'm gonna take some moss. What I wanna do is I want to attach the moss with the PVA glue to the sides of the island. Uh, that way it kind of drapes down and you get that illusion of a floating island because these this greenery, or in this case, this moss is growing out and down uh, towards the bottom. Gravity is just pulling it down to the side. I'm going to chop up some of the moss and sprinkle it onto the top of the island just to add more yellow in the field of green that I created. Uh, I'm going to attach it with PVA glue as well and then I'm just going to let the entire thing dry. And there you have it, the floating island of Zinch. What's cool about this piece is that when somebody first sees it uh, and, and it's not moving, it just seems like the rope is holding up these, this island. Uh, but then once they actually start putting their miniatures on there and start seeing the, the balancing act happen, it really adds to the illusion of the, uh, the floating aspect of Zinch and it makes it look uh, like it's been touched by the warp. Uh, it's a really cool piece of terrain playing with it uh, I would say you have to be a little bit careful you you have to tell your friends that you have to find a balance point if they're putting on miniatures that are of different sizes especially if uh, your friends have the older metal models uh, be careful with that but I've put on an actual Onager Dune Crawler and the Onager Dune Crawler has a huge base and it's actually a pretty heavy model and the piece was able to balancing it balance it out no problem. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, adding a bunch of infantry won't be that bad either. If you guys have any questions about the build, please comment down in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer all those questions. If you build your own floating terrain, uh, let me know. Uh, you can hit us up on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, we would love to see your awesome finished piece. Um, and if you guys are enjoying these terrain tutorials, uh, tell your friends. If your friend doesn't play 40k but is into like Dungeons and Dragons or any other tabletop, uh, a floating island like this would be an awesome addition to a uh, D&D session or anything like that. Uh, letting more people know that we're creating terrain tutorials really helps out the channel. So thank you guys if you do that. If you guys want to support us on Patreon, the link is also in the description. It's just a lot, dollar a month and with that dollar uh, we can create videos like this. Next week I'm going to be doing some orc terrain. I think I'm doing orc terrain. It's either orc terrain or I'm going back to building um, jungle pieces. So we will see. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>